Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today is going to be Darkwing Duck for the NES. Uh, yet another Capcom Disney game. And uh, this is a game I actually used to play as a kid. Um, this was a game uh, my parents bought me. I was probably about... I was probably about eight or nine years old when this game came out. And uh, so I played it a lot back in the day. I liked it a lot. Um, I don't like it a lot these days. I don't think it's aged that gracefully. Um, but it's still a fun game, you know, if you're an NES collector or just casual gamer that's just uh, looking to try something new um, that you haven't played before, I do recommend giving it a try. But me personally, it's one of those games that I, I just don't really enjoy playing as much these days as I did when I was a kid. Um, it's kind of like a, a Mega Man game in a way. Um, you've got, uh, when you start off, you've got this map screen and you can actually pick between three different levels to start off. So you can sort of progress through the game in kind of your own way in a little bit, kind of like Mega Man. You don't have as much flexibility um, because for one, Darkwing Duck doesn't have nearly as many stages. It only has about, uh, I got it's got like seven or eight stages total, um, maybe even just seven. So it's not like Mega Man where you start off with eight Robot Masters and you can you got eight different ways you you can go from the beginning. Um, but in this, you only have three different ways to go in the beginning. And then another three levels unlock, and then you beat those, and then I believe the final stage unlocks. Um, also, Darkwing Duck has uh, more rigid gameplay than, say, Mega Man. Uh, it's a very similar gameplay format where you, you run and gun, uh, but unfortunately, every time you shoot in Darkwing Duck, uh, you stop. Just like this. So I'm trying to hold forward and shoot at the same time. Um, in Mega Man, uh, in this, uh, in Mega Man, you could just constantly keep going, uh, running and gunning. Uh, also, you've got this shield mechanic by holding up, and it's actually a really neat mechanic. Um, but if you accidentally tap up in the air, you have to do the shield mechanic all the way until you hit the ground. So you can't do the shield and then fire afterwards. Um, so Darkwing Duck is very uh, <laughs> cumbersome compared to like a Mega Man game. Um, so it's got similar gameplay, but it doesn't quite have the flow of a Mega Man game. And that's one of the things I, I don't enjoy about the game too much these days. Uh, but once you get over that, it is still a, a relatively enjoyable game, I think. It's just slower. Uh, you've also got crazy respawning enemies in this game. So we just killed that guy twice, right? Well, there he is again. Um, the respawning enemies is really bad in this game. It's like literally the second you go off screen and go back, they're there again. So... Um, so that makes the game really tough as well later on in the game. You guys will see exactly what I mean once we get there. Uh, but it does have some neat gimmicks, like you've got these hooks you can hang on. Uh, to hang on them, you literally just jump and you don't press anything and Darkwing will just, uh, just hang on them automatically. Uh, these little icons right here, they're extra lives, so make sure you pick those up. And, uh, you, if you hit start, you do actually see you do get points in this game. Uh, unlike most Mega Man games. Uh, and if you press select, you can also activate your special weapons that you've picked up. Uh, there's a variety of different types of special weapons throughout the game. And um, they're powered by, I guess, gas. Uh, gas energy. And that's basically your ammunition. Uh, so you'll you'll find these little canisters that have G, uh, G listed on them. Uh, and those are your gas energy canisters. And so they'll basically give you your special weapon energy. Uh, you don't have to have your special weapon equipped like you do in, say, a Mega Man game. Uh, so that is a nice little benefit to that. Uh, however, I believe there's only... God, I think there's only three, uh, special weapon types. You've got this one, which is like this, uh, sort of like, little lightning bolt thing. Um, you've got another one that's, that's an arrow, and it, like, latches on the walls, and you can use it as a platform. Much like the arrow power-up in Mega Man 5. And, uh, and then the last one is this, like, ball of gas that hits the ground and this shoots out two projectiles across the whole floor. Uh, which is actually pretty useful in certain boss fights and, uh, against certain enemies. Um, for, for the most part, you can go through the entire game without using a single special weapon. Um, you can just use your, your basic, uh, basic gun like this. Um, so here's our second one. This is the one I was talking about where you, it hits the ground. Uh, this is actually really useful against this boss. I'm going to try to hold on to that, if possible. And this is where your shield mechanic kind of comes into play. You can just block this guy's projectiles. 
Uh, you can block most projectiles in this game, but there are a couple towards the end of the game that you cannot block, and it's just... It's trial and error to figure out which ones you can block and which ones you can't, so... You know, if you play this game enough, you'll you'll figure it out eventually. So, Darkwing Duck has a lot of situations where it's just kind of a very stop-and-go gameplay. Um, which, again, to me, just kind of hurts the flow of the game. I know I'm being critical of the game, but that's typically what I do in these Let's Plays as well. I don't just play the game, but I like to talk about their, uh, the graphics, the sounds, etc., the gameplay. Um, and as many of you guys know, I will be happy to gloat about games that really do hold up well. Uh, Darkwing Duck is just kind of sits there in the middle. It's got uh, some things that really hold it back, but other things that make it unique and interesting still. Uh, the boss fights are pretty decent. Um, and this is where... Let me, uh, let me try to demonstrate this. So, if you jump down and then shoot... Or, sorry, if you land on the floor, this guy will go to the next level, either above or below. However, if you use this uh, special gas and you just hang here, he doesn't do anything. So I actually figured this out the last time I played through this game, uh, and it's very helpful in this boss. Otherwise, you have to sort of uh, do a pattern like this. You try to hit him on the way down, and which is a little bit more of a pain. Let's see if we can get him back down. See? Just like that. And that's one level down. Uh, you do get extra lives from points. Uh, I believe the uh, the extra, I believe the uh, the sound that was made during that job well done screen uh, was the sound of uh, an extra life being awarded. So uh, killing enemies is good. You get points. So you get extra lives from points. Uh, if you play very well, you can you're gonna have like seven or eight lives by the end of the game, maybe more, um, which definitely helps you there. So these gems, they obviously give you points as well. And this wheel here, you can just kind of just keep pushing forward on it, and you'll walk along with it. So here's the arrow power-up. It's very slow, but it's actually really, really powerful. So there is that going for it. So these uh, kits right here, they're health kits. Uh, they actually give you all of your life back. Uh, there's tiny little bottles you can pick up that, uh... uh they look like, uh, medicine jars, basically. Uh, they give you one hit point back. So, in the top left-hand portion of the screen, you've got, uh, this heart. And that basically is your life meter. Um... And, uh, you can take four hits, and then you die. And then you have to start over. Uh, the checkpoints in this game are... They can be a little bit brutal. There's, uh, you typically have to, you know, they typically send you far back. Uh, so if you die at a boss or something like that, you've got a, it's a bit of a pain. So. So it's always good to not die in this game because of that. In this part right here, you just jump on this and you make a balloon, basically. And I've got 17 of my shot. I'm going to see if we can do a, uh... Do a little bit of a trick here. I haven't tried it before, but let's see. I've got the arrow power up, which allows me to hang on the walls. So what I'm thinking about trying, I'm gonna have to kill this guy. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Oh, I picked up the lightning one. Oh, when did I pick up the lightning one? I thought I still had the arrow. Oh, that was my fault. But with the arrow, you could probably toss an arrow in between here, grab onto it and jump up and get those extra lives. I think that's how you do it, I'm not sure. These turtles here, you can actually just jump over them if you, oops, if you time it right. You can do it without getting hit. Um, something else to note in this game is the hitboxes are a little large. So like, I got hit trying to jump over him, but it is entirely possible to, to just clear him completely. Uh, which is actually kind of what I like to do on other levels in the game. So again, this is a lot of Dark Queen Ducks, a lot of just waiting. You know, you jump up, you, you shoot once or twice, and then, uh... You wait for the, uh, the enemy to attack, then you dodge the attack, and then you just... It's rinse and repeat, basically. 
So in this boss, you have to wait until he's in his small form, and he kind of runs runs across the screen like an idiot, <laughs> and uh, and then you have to shoot him when he's small like that. Uh, ideally, you want to be shooting when he's big as well because he shoots these boxes at you, and uh, you can shoot the boxes as you can see. Alright, so two levels down. Uh, we should have a relatively smooth run. Uh, this game does give me some trouble at certain parts of the game, but for the most part, I, I think we should be able to run through this game without having to continue or anything like that. Uh, I'm definitely not as good at Darkwing Duck as I am, you know, pretty much any of the Mega Man games on the NES. Um, but a lot of that is just due to, like I mentioned, how it doesn't flow as well, you know? Every time you shoot, you have to stop. Uh, every time you try to jump and land, there's like a, a frame or two where you feel like you're just stuck and grounded and you can't move. So like, like every time you literally hit the ground, for like a frame or two, you literally just stop. Um, and it's probably hard to tell in the video, but um, it uh, can get a little bit frustrating. Uh, not really frustrating, but it, it's just, mm, I guess how I should put it is if you're so used to something that just has really fluid movement, like a Mega Man game, uh, Darkwing Duck is gonna be a little jarring at, at first, uh, when you try to play it. So, that's all. It's, it's de definitely, um, a little bit harder to be great at this game than it is a Mega Man game. And just rinse and repeat. So, I don't want to get that. Um, I want to keep my arrow that I had, because there's a secret here. And you can get a bunch of extra lives. Uh, in this section coming up right here. So there's one extra life. So much like a, a Contra game or something like that, you can uh, hold down and jump and basically fall beneath platforms. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 3 also does that. Um, so you don't have to press anything when you want to just hang on to something. Uh, you can tap down to let go, and then just press jump to go up. Um, so it's not really hard to, you know, drop down and just hang for a little bit, which is nice. There are some games where you have to drop down and then, like, press, press A or B or something like that, and uh, it just makes it harder and makes it easier to mess up and probably fall to your death, because that's... <laughs> what usually entails in a lot of these NES games. You fall to your death in these platformers. Uh, but Darkwing Duck does, uh, does do it really well there. So it's very... Um, the, the grabbing mechanic is very smooth in this game. I will give it that, definitely. And something else to keep in mind is you can duck and shoot in this game. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and get, um, this. It's probably not necessary, but... I typically like to not use my, uh, my gas abilities. Because, um... I like to just save the ammunition for later if I can. So we got some really big canisters, so we're up to 48 gas energy points. And we're gonna go ahead and go for this, why not? And you can just hang down here. These kangaroos are a bit of a pain. And actually, that that's a good description of a lot of enemies in this game. A lot of enemies in this game are just so annoying to fight. Um, I do like the platforming sections like this, though, where they kind of, you know, make you do a double take when you get to a platforming section. You kind of have to think about it real quick. Um, whoa, I still got hit by those spikes. Huh, that's weird. So again, that's the, uh, sort of the big hitboxes rearing their ugly heads. Um, Sometimes you'll take damage when you, it didn't look like you actually got hit. And that's very typical of, of a lot of NES games and a lot of old school games in general. Uh, 2D games. But it is something you have to be aware of in this game. 
a little bit harder to cut things close in this game because you'll get hit when it doesn't even look like you were supposed to get hit. Alright, three levels down. We're not quite halfway through the game, but almost there. Alright, so we're just gonna take it from left to right again. So these flower things on the trees are really annoying. Again, like I said, lots of enemies in this game are pretty annoying. And they pretty much just shoot all the way across the screen to wherever you are in the screen. So you have to be really careful when you fight them. And these dogs in the, <laughs> the dog houses, they're too big for the dog houses. Um, they charge right at you as well. So unlike uh, Mega Man, where you can pretty much just pummel your enemies as fast as you can uh, to kill your enemies quickly, uh, in Dark Queen Duck, every enemy uh, has some invincibility frames. So you'll notice, like, if I mash the fire button on enemies, uh, half the bullets don't hit because of those invincibility frames. Uh, so in order to kill the enemies the quickest, you kind of want to time your attack, like, not mash really quickly like this, because that's not going to do you any good. You're gonna like, you're gonna maybe hit them once, maybe twice if you're lucky. Uh, but if you time it, like for basically the same amount of time as the amount of invincibility frames, it's about this. So you can go one, two, three, four, and you'll actually hit one, two, three, four times. Um, so one, two, one, two, just like that. Um, that's how you want to take your enemies out quickly in this game. Uh, mashing just does not really help you at all. So, and that's definitely the way to be the most efficient in this game. So again, I fired a little bit too quickly there, so... Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this one, since I already, already had that weapon. And I think there was an extra life up top. That, uh... Not an extra life, sorry. Uh, a health pack. So I think we have to go down here. Yeah, that's right. So these little rat guys in, in uh, armored suits, you have to hit their heads. They, they take two hits. A lot of enemies in this game just take a, like one or two hits, uh, whereas others will take four, five, six, six hits, etc. These birds are really annoying. You really don't know where they're going to go once you hit them. They, they can charge right at you when you hit them. Um, Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I kind of want him to jump down, because you can get two hits on him if he jumps down. Yeah, so the arrow does a lot of damage, so if you have a lot of uh, gas energy points, um, use the arrow if you want. I mean, you can use any of the special weapons you want, but typically when I play this game, I like to just use my standard gun. You know, no ammunition, whatever. Um, it's like your pea shooter in Mega Man. Uh, you basically just use your stock gun all the way through. I like going through the Mega Man games without using the power-ups at all, unless I'm forced to. Like, there's some points where I have to use, like, Rush Coil or... You know, in Mega Man 1, you have to use Guts Man, and you have to use Ice Man at very, at very certain parts, you know. It's like these slight puzzle elements in the game. Uh, Darkwing Duck doesn't really have that, where you're forced to use a certain weapon to progress. So there really 
are very few uh, forced puzzle elements in this game. Uh, any puzzle elements you do see in this game, it's typically... Um, it's typically for, like, extra lives or something like that. But yeah, um, you know, you've got three different special weapons, you know, feel free to use whatever you want at, uh, any boss. You've got these, uh, genie bottles here. You kind of want to take these guys out as quickly as possible. And there's gonna be some- oh, there they are. Like the squirrels or something like that, with like these big feet. They go pretty quickly across the screen, and they can walk on spikes and so forth, and you're gonna see that in just a couple of minutes, most likely. And we got hit. So I'm not gonna go for those uh, that power up down there in the bottom left. That's really hard to get out of, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, we'll go ahead and grab this one. You know, I'm gonna try to take these guys out like this. So yeah, if you don't kill that, uh, that squirrel, he can actually jump on these spikes right here. Uh, the first time I played through this recently, he, uh, followed me all the way over to here. And, of course, uh, did a lot of damage to me as well. These ducks on the magic carpets, they just, they get taken out in one hit, so they're not too hard to deal with. controls weren't being responsive. Every time you press, like, up or down or something like that, you can't fire. There's, like, a couple of frames where you can't shoot or anything, and that's exactly what happened. Because I tried ducking the shoot, but I didn't hold down down long enough, and so I didn't fire, and thus my character raised back up, and while he was raising, I wasn't able to... Uh, it's just... Darkwing Dog, it just feels really weird compared to uh, some other NES games. So this game often has enemies that require really quick eye-hand coordination and reflexes, but your character just feels ill-suited to the task, if you know what I mean. It's that sort of thing, like, like, oh, you got these really, these guys that can shoot really quickly, yet, like, I, I don't feel like I can react fast enough. Um, it's not because I can't react fast enough, it's that the game won't let me react fast enough. boss time. Uh, this boss is actually pretty easy, if I remember correctly. And that's it. Some bosses you'll find are much harder than others. Uh, that boss is one of the easiest in the game, you know, by far. Yeah, so this level has a few tricky sections in it. The boss fight's not too bad either, but it is one of the more puzzle-oriented uh, bosses. So these guys right here, you can block their basketballs. Kangaroos throwing basketballs. And robotic dogs. Oh, 
Oh, the health pack disappeared. That's actually a pretty tricky jump right there. That took me a few tries the first time I played through this just recently. I mean, the first time I played through it again recently. Like, I used to play this game all the time as a kid, but I never really revisited it. Uh, revisited it? Eh, bleh. I never visited it again over the years. Um, you know, it's one of those games, like, I decided to pop out recently. I was like, you know, I used to play Dark Green Duck a lot as a kid. So, let's try to let's play it, because, you know, if I could beat it as a kid, I can most certainly beat it as an adult. No problem at all. Um, but it actually gave me more trouble than I had remembered. Like, I remember never having any problems with this game. It's one of those NES games I beat pretty quickly. I probably beat it the same day that I, I got it. And that's the part right there where you can just jump over the turtles. But got hit that time. You have to be really careful about that. So yeah, we're here trying to let's play the game, but when I visited the game again for the first time uh, in a while, um, I, I had a hard time getting into the game. Um, both from a motivation perspective, like I was playing the game and I just wasn't really feeling it, if you know what I mean. But I kind of forced myself to go through it on stream a couple times, and uh, I managed to do it, but not without a lot of trouble. Uh, the controls definitely took some time to get used to. You know, now I'm not having too much of a difficult time here, but... But, uh, it is uh, a little tricky compared to, say, DuckTales or, um, a Mega Man game or, or something like that. So, uh, on this boss, you need to just hit the boss. That's really it. Um, these sort of, like, pillars... They uh, shoot fireballs out, and you can actually hit the uh, the cores. And it's kind of the best way to do it is try to take out the cores. So he goes and he tries to fix them. Okay, we got him. I was actually worried there for the second that I that I might die, but but yeah, you don't actually have to hit the cores of those pillars, of those machines. Uh, you can just go right for the boss, and that's typically what I do. I'll just go right for the boss. Alright, so I believe this is actually the final stage, yeah. Yep, Steel Beak, final level. So there's only seven stages in the game. There aren't any hidden levels, as far as I'm aware. Um, and that's it. Relatively short game. I mean, if this was a Mega Man game, we would probably be about halfway through the game now. And... And, but no, we're at the actual final stage, so... This level does have some tricky parts to it, though, so... And you guys will see exactly what I mean in just a few moments. And this is also kind of where, like, your respawning enemies start becoming kind of problematic. These guys you can only hit from behind. So they're a little tricky to deal with. Oh, those birds. Like I, like I said, you just don't know where they're going.
All right, I think we're getting relatively close close to the end now. Yeah, I remember this part. All right, so these guys are probably the toughest enemies in the game. You hit them a, a few times, and then they turn into this, like, robo-duck sort of form. And you might say, oh, well, that's not too bad, but if you hit them enough, they, they turn into freaking crazy bouncing duck, which is really hard to deal with. So, you kind of just want them to walk away. Don't even try to take them out. And this guy, you can just jump over. These dogs in these barrels, you can hit the barrel um, once the dog tries to throw it at you. So, jump over him, that's it. Like, I mean, unless you want the points, don't even try to go for them, it's just... Just let him fall down. Just like that. That's the easiest way to deal with these guys. If you don't, it's... I died many times on that part, trying to, uh... Trying to get past these guys. This one's a little bit trickier, because you have much less platforming space to work with. And I don't need the gas power-ups, because... I'm good. We can jump over that. I've still got the arrow. Alright, it's not gonna really matter at this boss. On this boss, it's just kinda like... Yeah, I don't even really use the special weapons on this boss. So that part, you pretty much have to take the guy out. Alright, so this is actually a pretty tricky f beginning to the final boss. He's got these, uh, little UFO things. Yeah, we died. He's got these UFO things that just kind of home in on you. And what I find is it's easiest just to take him out and then sort of just perch here and just do this. And you have to shoot his door. And then he drops down, he leaves you some health, which is good. And you pretty much just shoot him, over and over. So this part's actually pretty easy. And that's it, we just beat Darkwing Duck for the NES. You've foiled my plans this time, Darkwing, but next time we meet, I shall be victorious. And we will never meet again, because there wasn't ever a Darkwing Duck game, game after this. Not counting the really bad uh, PC Engine Turbo Graphics version. <laughs> and I, I don't know, was there a Game Boy game? Was there a Darkwing Duck Game Boy game? Does anybody know? But I don't think there were any other Darkwing Duck games after this. Um, obviously, Darkwing Duck the series uh, didn't continue on for much longer. And, uh, I had, think it had a bunch of seasons. I watched it a lot as a kid, but, uh, it was not one of those cartoon shows that just kept going on. And, uh, so you didn't really see any other games or, or anything in the Darkwing Duck franchise. But, uh, yeah, that's Darkwing Duck for the NES, guys. I mean, it's still a, I think it's still a fun game. I think it's still worth playing. Uh, I didn't mean to sound overly negative in the beginning of the video, but, uh, I definitely don't hold it in the same light as, like, DuckTales. Uh, in some of the other Capcom Disney games. Um, or the Mega Man games, you know, because it has... You, you can't play Darkwing Duck and not compare it to Mega Man. I mean, it's, it's made by Capcom, for one, but two, it's got very, very similar gameplay, so it's really hard to play it without comparing it, or making comparisons to Mega Man. But it's still worth playing if you're a fan of NES games, if you're a collector, or even just a casual gamer looking for something new to play. Uh, I do recommend giving it a try, but it is, just be warned, if you're really familiar with your Mega Mans, uh, or even just Mega Man 2, or something like that. Um, the popular Mega Man. Um, it's gonna take a little while to get used to. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. For those of you guys new to my channel, if you're still watching to this point, uh, thank you. But feel free to subscribe. I've got a lot of Let's Plays here, uh, and many other videos on my channel you can check out. For everybody else already subbed, thanks as usual for your continued support. I uh, hope you enjoy these videos, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.